Hello and welcome to this review of the skull. The skull is made up of the calvaria and the facial skeleton. It's comprised of 22 individual bones if we don't include the small ossicles of the ear. We're going to start off on this one by labelling the frontal bone which forms the roof of the orbit. We have paired nasal bones which contribute to the bridge of the nose. Forming the cheekbone we have the maxilla which also houses the upper teeth. Completing the cheekbone we have the zygomatic bone. Moving posteriorly we have the occipital bone and beneath there would be the occipital lobes of the brain. Laterally we have the temporal bone, this is actually the squamous part of the temporal bone. Superiorly we have the parietal bone and there would be the parietal lobes of the brain beneath there. Moving on to the mandible, an important structure known as the head of the condylar process contributes to the temporomandibular joint, a synovial joint. Muscles of mastication would attach to the ramus of the mandible. We also have the body of the mandible. Moving anteriorly, also for attachment of muscles, we have the coronoid process. We have a hole in the anterior part of the mandible known as the mental foramen for branches of trigeminal nerve to protrude through. Superiorly, we need to label a suture. This suture is known as the coronal suture. Sutures are immovable fibrous joints. To complete this diagram, the mastoid process, actually part of the temporal bone, contains air cells. We've got the spinous process. This is a long, slender, bony process and is important for the attachment of a ligament and for several muscles. To complete this diagram, we now need to draw on the final bone here, the sphenoid bone, and this contributes to a structure, an H-shaped join between the sutures known as the terion. This is a weak area because of the join and it has the middle meningeal artery running beneath it where during trauma, that artery is susceptible to rupture, causing an extradural hematoma. Moving on to an anterior view. Now, this is a frontal view of the skull. We can see the frontal bone, which is fairly large, contributing to the forehead. We can put on our parietal bones. Of course, there's one of those on each side. We can label the sphenoid bone. Here we can see the greater wing of the sphenoid bone contributing to the orbit. We've got the zygomatic bone, again, forming part of the cheek and the maxilla, again. We have the ramus of the mandible and we also can see the mental foramen again. We can now see the mental tubercle and the protuberance, which make up the size and the shape of the chin. We can also see once more the nasal bone. On this view, we get a glimpse of some holes in the skull called the infraorbital foramen. This is where the maxillary nerve would pass through for sensory innovation. Likewise, we would get trigeminal nerves passing through the supraorbital foramen, which is just above the orbit. We can also see the body of the mandible inferiorly as well, which we saw previously on the other diagram. So that completes our anterior view. We can now look at a posterior view of the skull. Here we can see the parietal bone on each side. We can see the occipital bone posteriorly, which makes up the majority of this view. We can put on the suture. This is the sagittal suture, which joins the two parietal bones. We've got the lambdoidal suture here. Often we see wormian bones in there. Here we've got the occipital mastoid suture, often not labelled in some diagrams, so it's good to put that on. We've got the superior nuchal line, important for the attachment of muscles like occipitalis and trapezius, splenius capitus. Inferior nuchal line for attachment of the rectus capitus group of muscles. Also in the midline, we've got the external occipital protuberance, a midline structure. Finally, we're going to look at a frontal lateral view. Here we can see the frontal bone once more. We can see the parietal bone once more. We can see the nasal bone again, and we can see the sphenoid bone again, and of course that H-shaped structure, the terion, that weak point in the skull. We can move on now to some other structures that we haven't seen or labelled. We have, coming on now, we have the part of the skull known as the zygomatic process. This is actually part of the temporal bone. We can put on the zygoma again, and we can put on the temporal process of the zygoma, and that makes up the, the arch there. The mental foramen, again, we can see, and here we can see the infraorbital foramen once more. 
This time we can label on the nasolacrimal duct. This is actually the nasolacrimal canal leading to the duct. And we can see the coronal suture. At the very top, we can label on another suture. This is the sagittal suture. And right in the middle, we've got the bregma. This is often important in stereotactic surgery. So finally, we can Put the external auditory meatus on this is the external opening of the ear and we've seen it before but we'll label it finally here we can label the mastoid process which will be coming on any second now and that completes our diagram and quick review of the skull subscribe to Sultan brain hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain